Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we are installing a threshold drainage system and we found the perfect partner for this patio paving. So we asked ourselves the question, why are we installing a threshold drainage system on this small paved area? Well, the reason is that before there was no back inlet gully, no drainage, no linear drainage system, just gravel in that was getting contaminated with weeds and dirt. What the threshold drainage system will allow us to do is to get that water away with ease and it's gone. It'll stay clean through the winter and the summer. So this is the gully pot. This is the top that comes with it. It's a aluminium black powder coated finish. Looks absolutely fantastic and it's gonna last. It's not gonna bow or bend like those plastic tops that you see. Inside the gully pot, you have this trap. This trap is gonna collect any spoils and debris that might go into the gully pot itself. And this will avoid any potential problems later on down your drain. It's important to mention that these gully pots will operate independently because they are not compatible with the threshold drainage system. It has its own four inch outlets underneath. So now the gully pot is in its position under the tap and we're ready to go with the threshold drainage system. So what we intend to do is to run the threshold drainage system to the corner and then from the corner there is a fall on the patio running to this four inch outlet underneath the patio here. So how does your drain come? Well this is how it will, will arrive. This is the, the drain itself and this is the topping. But let's have a look what we've got here. Very easy to slide in and out. There we are. Absolutely perfect. Let's have a look. But this is what makes the difference to your drain. Look at the top of this. We've gone for the black powder coated. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Perfect finish. Well, there you are, two channels butted up together. But we ain't going to install it by buttoning these up together because you're going to have water that's going to permeate down to the mortar below. And at a later date, you're going to have that freeze thaw effect and it's just going to cause a problem. We want to maintain some integrity with this install. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a channel connector like this one here. Very simple. Just clicks into position like this and like this. But the other thing we're going to do to make sure it's got some integrity, we're going to use some solvent cement glue like this one here. So this is an end cap. So, so important. It goes on the end like this. And that's going to stop any water coming out from this end. But don't forget, mind, you want to glue this one in position. Have a look at this. Here we have, in a dry lay position, our channel, two channels. It takes us to the corner, but it's a little bit longer. And the other thing is, of course, is how are we going to return this channel across to that channel? This is our corner unit. Look at that. They've even got a mitre on it as well. Such perfect finish. So the next stage is to get this corner unit into position. But you've got to make sure that you mark in the right place. So all we have to do is lift our channel up like so. Drop the corner unit in, in the position where we want it. Don't forget to allow for the grout line. And then we can mark and cut accordingly to what we see on the underside. So we've got our mark of our channel now. You could use a grinder to cut this, but the, the RPM of the grinder could melt your plastic and then you'd have to clean the edge up. For me, the best way of cutting this is with one of these. Just in position on your cut there, nice and square mark a line and I'd mark it all the way around to ensure that you've got a nice straight cut. So it's important that you want your drainage channel, channel to stay in place and we do that using a bedding mortar. This is four parts sand, one cement and just a little bit of water. You don't want it too dry but you don't want it too wet. You want some compressive strength under your channel. So what I do occasionally, the offcut of my channel, I use to help me gauge the height of the bedding mortar, like so. Very simple, and it's quick, and it's easy.
So we've cut the top now to the required length. Now you can use a hacksaw or you can use a metal disc on your grinder. But it's so important to make sure that you take the burrs off this end here. But remember, when your drainage arrives, it will be powder coated like this, okay? Now, what we, we know that it's not gonna rust because it's aluminum, but it's so important that maybe just to get the finish and get it to look good, we're gonna give it a bit of a spray with this. So we are, last piece for this part of this channel. So we're gonna cut this to the right size, and before we, we bed it in, we're gonna cut a core cut through here to show you how we connect to the four inch underneath. There you are, once we've established where our outlet's gonna be on our channel, and we've cut our core hole in it, that outlet now will sit directly on top of our waste pipe. Our down pipe then can come and sit on top of the channel itself. We cut the shape out on top of the channel, and then the outlet, the flow of the water, will go directly above the four inch waste pipe, and that will be able to cope with the amount of water that comes down there. And that's it. Seriously. Look at that. There's times in this job, over 40 years of doing this, and there's those moments when you know that it all comes together. So if you're looking for any uh, drainage channels or you're looking for some associated accessories, head over to startsafety.uk.